Elizabeth Mukherjee was born in 1900 and died aged 91 without leaving a will. With no known photographs or people who knew her, Elizabeth's life is a bit of a mystery. Her £25,000 estate had remained on the Treasury's list unsolved and unclaimed ever since the early 1990s, but her name was not forgotten. Air hunter Hector Birchwood always holds out hope that old cases can one day be solved. Any time a new database comes online, any time we buy uh, a new bit of information uh, uh, which relates to our business, then I pick up those old cases and I run them through. Hector works alongside his father, Peter Birchwood, and case managers Saul and Phil, and together they make up the team at Celtic Research. Like every other air hunting company in the UK, they leap into action every Thursday morning when the Treasury releases new names of unclaimed estates. But Hector never shies away from the challenges involved with an unsolved case. This case had been picked up and dropped, I think, on a couple of different locations mainly because there wasn't enough information to find heirs the first time around. But with the release of the 1901 census, Hector tried once again to find the descendants of the mysterious Elizabeth Mukherjee. For an heir hunter, it's a rare occasion to work a name of Asian origin. We don't see very many Indian names uh, coming up in the unclaimed estates. We're missing the birth of her father. And as Hector continued his initial research, Elizabeth's case was getting more and more out of the ordinary. I thought initially this might lead to India, uh, and perhaps I should be looking at the uh, India records at the British Library. Hector got down to his research and discovered that Elizabeth had taken her surname from her late husband, Dirigendra Mukherjee, whom she married in 1938. He was born and brought up in the UK after his father came to England around the late 19th century to study law. In the 1890s, Elizabeth's father-in-law, Jog Mendra, was one of just a handful of Indians living in England. But the Mukherjee name was to go down in both Indian and English history. After he'd finished his studies, Jogmendra went on to work as a personal secretary for Dadhabna Naroji, an Indian who'd achieved something quite remarkable in the UK. He was the first Indian to be elected to the House of Commons, the British Parliament, in 1892. This was a truly remarkable feat because Dadhabna Naroji had been born and brought up in India. He was quite a senior political figure in India as well. He was one of the founding fathers of the Indian National Congress, which became the main nationalist organisation and political party in India that fought against the British for independence. So I'm sure Mukherjee, as private secretary, would have met many of the leading politicians, British and Indian, of the time. Including Gandhi, who was visiting England in 1906 to campaign for better rights for Indians in colonial South Africa.